Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome back to Canon for the, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. Yes, it's the Friday morning show. Wonderful stuff. Yeah, I tell you, it's all about some breaking news. God, I didn't go live yesterday. I gave myself a break. I gave you guys a break as well from me and vice versa, if you know what I mean. But imagine this, we've got a manager who can't play in the same 11 back to back. Is this the future? We've got some players, some familiar faces like Shaka, Bellerin, Kolasinac. Is this the future? Where are we going to be heading to in this season, new season? Mid-table action. Is this the future? You guys are my age. You know what I'm talking about. Is this the future? Yeah, <laughs> is this the future? <laughs> oh, dear me, guys, you're of my ears, you know what I'm talking about, man. A certain song, is this the future? Yeah, <laughs> welcome back to Canon for the, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world. Is this the future? Oh, am, I, am I in a proud of universe or what, man? Yeah, what you guys can do right now on a Friday morning. Actually, UK, make sure you subscribe. You've got to subscribe. Be part of the community, man. Is this the future? God. <laughs> anyway, guys, you know what? Let's I think let's get into the news. You know, right off the bat. Straight off the bat, man. Oh, where's the bat? The bat, the bat. Well, not a bat. There's there's a player here. Yeah, Joe Willett, man. <sighs> also appears they've agreed a £25 million deal uh, with uh, Newcastle uh, to sign Joe Willock. Willock enjoyed a tremendous spell on loan at the Magpies during the second half of the 2021 campaign, scoring eight goals in 14 Premier League uh, appearances. And actually, seven goals in seven consecutive games. Who, who did that previously? Yeah, Mr Shearer. Mr. Shearer. But um, yeah, 21 year old's uh, future has been uh, uncertain all summer. The multiple sources reporting different uh, stories all over the in place. Yeah, speaking uh, in July, Arsenal boss Mikateta said that uh, Joe is part of our plans. Rubbish. He's our player, and in uh, the time that he um, is here, we'll try to make uh, the most of him. He had a great experience on loan. He was, I think, one of the most important players for the uh, survival. Newcastle, it is. However, reports have suggested that the Gunners were listening to offers for the uh, midfielder whilst Daily Mail uh, have uh, previously said that the North Londoners were likely to sell him to raise funds uh, for their own spending spree. Spending spree. Reports in France have claimed that AES uh, Monaco were eyeing up uh, the move for Joe Willock, but links quickly died down because it wasn't true in the first place. Wasn't true. Despite the preseason and not being a lot to go by, Newcastle have looked lots at times about the youngster in their team. See, Bruce, a 3 5 2 system requires someone with Joe Willett's profile to play in the free role and drive the team forward in transition, something that he thrived on in the last term. Now, I'll tell you, as always, my opinion in regards to Joe Willock. And I'm going to be consistent with this. Consistency. Something that uh, Mikko Arteta needs to kind of take a you know, lesson out of my rule book. Consistent message. Try and be consistent in everything you do. Yeah, we all make mistakes. They maybe, you know, ask for like amending the things you're trying to do, the things you're trying to achieve. Yeah. But you've got to be and remain consistent. So I'll be consistent with my message. Joe Willock. Unselfish message from me on Canon Foy TV to you. If it is true that Newcastle have now agreed terms, they're, they're going to buy you, and you're happy to go over to Newcastle, I can only wish you all the best, youngster. The stats tell the story in itself. Seven goals in seven consecutive games. Shall I repeat it again? Seven goals in seven consecutive games. He would never have got that if he played for Arsenal under Mikko Arteta. He would have been a bit part player. 
had the odd game there, there, maybe here, there, and everywhere, but not seven consecutive games. He's never done that for Arsenal. Never done that for Arsenal. So look at the stats. Look at the evidence. It's undeniably, it's, it's there. There's no way to bend it, to change it, to amend it. It's there. Seven consecutive goals in seven consecutive games. He wouldn't have done that if you played for Arsenal under Mikko Arteta. Which player in the midfield, apart from Saka and Emerson Fro, who scored those amount of goals, who got those consecutive games playing for Arsenal? Nobody. Now, if memory serves me right, Joe Willock's father is his agent. Is his agent. The player of you know, got his calculator out, done the maths, and said, actually, you know what, I'm off. I am off. A player who wants to stay at Arsenal wouldn't do that, would he? He's better off, he's more happier playing for Newcastle. Seven consecutive goals in seven consecutive games. That would not have happened if he was at Arsenal. He probably would have been warming up the bench, but he would have not returned those stats. And so, like I said, from the, from the get-go, from the beginning, when I started, Joe Willock, from an unselfish point of view, congratulations to you. Well done to you. And if it means yeah, you're going to go, away from a club that saw you, you know, grow from, from boyhood to manhood, seek your fame and fortune with another club, because it happens. It happens. Well done to you, youngster. Now, I'm sure some of you in the live chat might think, ah, ah what is Alex talking about? Uh, we don't have a player like uh, Joe Willock. Does Joe Willock want to stay at Arsenal? Does he, that should be the first question. Does he want to stay at Arsenal? Does he see himself eking out the same stats, game in and game out, being consistently played? I can ask that question for him. No, you won't, youngster. You won't. So congratulations to you. You know, seek your fame and fortune. You've got a manager. I mean, I don't like Steve Bruce, but that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He's going to Newcastle. Congratulations, Joe Willock. We messed that up. And I'm not saying, oh, yo, yo, you know, uh, Mikko Arteta. Oh, it is what it is. The stats are there in black and white. Underlined it. Yeah? In brackets. There. Don't try and amend it or change it. It is what it is. We put him out. On, why did we put him out on loan? It was nothing to do to see... Oh, you know what? See how he gets on. Where was he going to fit in the squad? Where was he going to fit? So I'd far rather put him out on loan. There's nothing about, oh, let's see if he can... Uh, is he going to make up? Oh, it was nothing to... Where was he going to fit in the midfield? Because if the manager really believed in him, he would have kept him at Arsenal. And I said, right, OK, stay here. I would give you 10 goals on, on the bounce and see how you get on with that. But Mick Arteta didn't do that. He put him out on loan because there's no space for him. Who was the other player he put out on loan? Ainsley Maitland-Niles. Why? Because there's no space for him there. He wasn't going to be played consistently. And Ainsley Maitland-Niles thought, well, right, okay, now I better have on, on loan. There's no space for me here. There was nothing to do with Right, we're going to put them out on loan and let's see what they can do. There was nothing to do with that. There was no space in the midfield for those players. Anyway, I want to, you know, get an, on a rant here. But Joe Willock, I am happy for you. I'm really, really happy for you. You know, you can see in the picture, actually, he's happy. How oh, is he? Yeah, he said, yeah, Alex, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done, Alex. But, you know, on a serious point... I want our academy players to be given a chance. Season before last, he had played the most 
Premier League games above and beyond any player the season before last. Didn't happen for him, did it? Didn't happen for him. Season just gone, he was not going to play in the midfield. He wasn't going to play in the midfield. But anyway, Joe Willock, I'm, I'm happy for you. If the, if the news is true that you're going to be going to Newcastle, the agreement there has been made, then well done to you. Yeah, Seek your fame and fortune with the Magpies. Yeah, you, you, you seem more happier. You seem more happier playing over there. Seven goals in seven consecutive games tells you the story in itself. Anyway, let's calm it down a little bit, Alex. Let's calm it down just a little bit. Right, the second bit of news. It took 10 minutes to, for me to get through that one. Oh, my days. Oh, my days. Where is this young stuff? Let me put him up. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Let's put him up. Sorry, guys. Sorry about this. <laughs> Lack of planning. Lack of planning. Lack of planning. I'll put this picture up. Yeah. I'll put this up. Saliba. William Saliba admits he ignored Arsenal transfer request when joining Marseille. William Saliba had revealed he ignored Arsenal's request to join a, a club in the Premier League and uh, instead opting to return to France. The 20-year-old has said has yet to make a senior appearance for the Gunners two years on from his £27 million move from Saint-Étienne. Saliba returned to uh, his former club in the 2019-20 season with hopes that he would be part of Arsenal's squad later that year. However, injuries and a curtailment of the League One champions due to COVID, but Mikko Arteta felt he hadn't played enough football to challenge for a place at the Emirates. Now, this this is not me saying this. This is the report. I'm going to, you know, you know, um, how can I say this? Disagree with almost everything that's said in here, or maybe seventy percent. The Gunners' are boss made a decision to omit the Frenchman from the Premier League squad at the, the start of the the term, limiting his appearances to the under twenty threes. But anyway, listen, listen. So the, 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 the long and short tell of this is that Saliba has said that it wasn't anything to do with uh, Arteta. He took the decision. Yeah? He took the decision to say, actually, you know what? I'll go to this French. I don't want to play in uh, you know, any kind of uh, Premier League uh, uh, club. He took the decision. It was nothing to do with Mikel Arteta. All right? That's it. That's it. Saliba, done, done and dusted. Let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the next one. Who's the next one? Ah, this is a nice story, actually. I really do like this one. I saw the video. Yeah, Bukayo Saka, man. Yeah. If you bring up a tear to my eye, it's just it just shows the love we have for the star boy. Uh, I would have actually called him uh, the star child. I mean, it's, it's a song that um, Level 42, even on Level 42, there's one of the earliest um, recordings called the star child. Wonderful song that I played in the, what's it, the, the early 80s, it was 80, 81. I played it every single minute, repeat and repeat and repeat on some old headphones. But uh, anyway, Star Child. But um, we call him Star Boy. But Kai Saka has been presented with hundreds of messages of support um, at the Arsenal training ground following the racist abuse he received after the final of the 2020s. The, the war of letters, notes, drawings, flags, pictures, and teddy bears <laughs> yeah. left the 19 year old uh, England winger speechless. Uh, how do I even thank you for all these gifts? Saka saying um, in the clip, this is a, uh, can I just pick it up and take it home? No, you can't. <laughs> you can't take it home. How can you take it home? Can't take it home. Can't take it home. You, you know, uh, just, just uh, actually, no, you can take it home. You can take it home. A young Saka, star, star boy. Again, star boy, star child, star boy. What happens when he reaches like his mid 20s? We're still going to call him star boy. But anyway, yes, I thought, yes, yeah, heart. Warming, uh, you can see there in the picture. Saka, please, can I have your shirt? No, you can't. No, you can't. But I'll be taking the teddy bear. Take the teddy bear. Yeah, yeah. Star boy, well done, well done, gangster. Uh, it's, it's a bit of plethora of news because last time I wasn't live. I thought, ah, oh, you know what? I'll give yourselves a break from the repetitive news. Yeah, give myself a break from the repetitive news, and I spent a good time. I said, my wife going out doing other bits and pieces. Some clothes shopping. Clothes shopping, don't you know? Clothes shopping. All right, uh, off the beaten track. Uh, this is not Arsenal related. Uh, well, it's not Arsenal related. 
is not related to Arsenal. However, um, yes, Jack Grealish has now officially signed for Aston Villa. Man City have signed an England midfielder Jack Grealish from Aston Villa for a British record of £100 million. The 25 year old joins uh, the Premier League champions on a six year contract and will wear the number 10 uh, shirt recently vacated by Sergio Aguero. The fees of passes, the £89 million paid uh, uh, Man United for um, Paul Pogba for Juventus for 2016. City are the best team in the country with a manager considered to be the best in the world, said uh, Grealish. It's a dream come true uh, to be a part of this club. The move makes Grealish the ninth most expensive player in the history. Now, I saw the, the clip of the video. I didn't watch all of it, but I could see he kind of got a little bit choked up because he had been, what, as a for 19 years? 19 years, I think? That's a long time. But I, he, he has made the right decision. I think it was, it must have, you know, pulled and, and, and torn on, on heartstrings. 19 years at one club and now, you know, now going to be turned up, you know, in the, the, the blue and white of uh, Manchester City. But I think he has made the right decision. Maturity. I mean, the, during the beginning, actually, you know, before, f before that, there were some spoiler stories about him doing silly things. I understand that as, as, a youngster growing up, the pressure, and then some the story about breaking the COVID rules. Let's hope now we see him in. But well, I don't want to see him in the, in the, the newspapers. I, actually, if I do, I want to see him for the right reasons, footballing reasons. But you know what, Jack Grealish, well done to you. Again, I could see you know when you're doing the interview, nineteen years, nineteen years at Aston Villa. But congratulations to you. So yeah, they're not Arsenal related, but for oh, you know, let's let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. Um, last bit of news. Talk about breaking news. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Wow. Dare to dream. <coughs> Lionel Messi. The dare to dream part is, is my my bit on, on the take on the story here. Excuse me. I just need to take some some water. Excuse me, a little plethora of, uh, of live news this morning. Barcelona have announced that Lionel Messi is leaving the club after financial and structural obstacles made it impossible to renew his contract. Now, I'm not going to go into the greater uh, detail on this one, but what I have done, there's been a video recorded, quite funny video in regards to Lionel Messi. Now I'm going to be leaving uh, Barcelona, 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 Barcelona. But yeah, I've done a video. It'll be coming up uh, 1.30 p.m. UK time. So wherever you are, well, make sure you've got your phone. So I can't wait for the video. I just done a video on Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. But yeah, I'm, I'm not going to go into the news in regards to Lionel Messi. I've already done a video, a pre-recorded video in regards to Lionel Messi. So that has been the news of this morning. Yes, yeah, Canon Foy TV. Yeah, we've got a manager who can't play the same, you know, back to back teams. Is this the future? We've got Granit Shaka, Bellerin, uh, Kalasnach at Arsenal still. Is this the future? I don't know, Alex. I don't know what's the future. If I knew what the future was, I wouldn't tell you. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a consistent message. Consistent message. What I just want to do. We're going to an advert break. And I can see the live chat is just kind of lit, as you youngsters say. It's lit, Alex. It's lit. Is it lit? What does that mean? We're going to an advert break. <laughs> when I get back, I'm going to have a little swig of uh, some more water. We'll go into the live uh, chat and see who was joining us on this uh, Friday morning show. See you on the other side.
Yeah, okay, so we're back, we're back, we're back, we're back. We've been going through the four or five segment of live news. And I, actually, I don't remember in, in my longest memory, or shortest memory, with us taking a long time to go through the, that first segment. Joe Willock, I got a little bit heated, didn't I? Uh, anyway, listen, everyone's entitled to their own opinion, but I'm having my opinion on Canon 40 TV. Let's go into the live chat and see who's joining on this one. Uh, George, good morning. To that. Are we sure we're going to make it at next season with a Shaka party? We need an actual box to box. And number 10, use uh, Lacazette as number nine. Let's let him go next season and sign a good striker next season. Come on, you gunners. Come on, you gunners. Well, George, first part, um, Shaka party. The party's that injured, isn't he? He's going to probably miss three games. So that'll be the first three game opener in August. Brentford. Chelsea, Man City. In regards to Shaka, I have no idea. I have no idea. He's going to have to find a new partner. Maybe they'll um, ask uh, Mohamed El Nenny. Yeah, the midfielder scores disgusting goals. Yeah, El Nenny. All righty. I've got Ben here who says, uh, Hi, how are you today? I'm really good, Ben. I, I, how are you? Let us know what part of the world you are typing from and we'll give you a shout out. Make sure you keep safe. Keep safe. Say hello to your family from us. Uh, Jen says, hello, family members are wonderful. See, look at, that, look at that, such niceties. This is what we want to see in the live chat. Look, look at that. Hello, family members. Jen, hello to you. Yeah? Is it Abu Bakr? Uh, Fasola, good morning. Good morning, brother. Good morning to you, my brother. I hope you are well. Yeah? Uh, Pat, good morning. Where's, uh, where's Static? We're static. <laughs> I'm saying nothing. <laughs> Orin Crawford, good morning. I think you're from the Caribbean. I think someone in the Caribbean. Maybe not. I mate, good to see you. I've been uh, away. Uh, what is happening to my team? Why do we leave it to the late? I mean, miss the players that we could, it could be great at our club. How many players do you think we will end up with? Uh, Orin Crawford, good morning to you. Um, for me, I have no idea. I have no idea. The report, if you believe everything you read in the news and you hear, Ben White was told by Mikko Arteta, Oi, you're not going to be the last signing. Okay, we're going to get another signing in. I was thinking, why would you want to tell? I mean, that's nothing to do with it. That's nothing to do with Ben White. Just listen, sign the contract, boom, get out of Arsenal, that is it. Why is Mikko Arteta, if it is true that he's told Ben, Oi, Ben White, you know what? Thank you for signing Arsenal. And you know what? But, but, you're not going to be the last sign. We're going to get somebody else in. That leaves it open for speculation. Open for speculation. I'm more concerned, Owen, about which players are going to be leaving. That's what I'm more concerned about. Who's going to be leaving Arsenal? Not who's coming in at Arsenal. Who's leaving? Good morning, Gail. I hope you are well. Arteta talks complete crap. It doesn't matter how good you are. If your face doesn't fit uh, with him, you're out of the door. You're out. Get out. Without speculating and making the assumption, Gail, because truly, you know, no one will really know what's happened between Arteta and Saliba. No one will know. There's only two people that knows. William Saliba, who hasn't come out as far as, as I know, literally those statements, Mikko Arteta hates me. <laughs> or the aforementioned Mikko Arteta hasn't come out and he won't, he won't come out. But there's something not right with the situation here. Something not right. Again, that, that leaves things open for us to be, you know, to be speculative. Oh, this, maybe it's, it doesn't, he, he doesn't like him. S something that he's done. We're never going to really know. We won't know. Olimi, good morning. Uh, morning, bro. Morning, morning, morning to you. Morning to you. Let me know where in the world. You are, we'll give you a quick shout out. Uh, it's eight goals in eight games. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, consecutive. Yeah, seven consecutive goals in seven games. But thank you for that, Pap. Thank you for that. But yeah, where is where is Static? Static. Uh, Lloyd, good morning, Lloyd. What's happening? Willock will end up being sold to Man City. Really? Joe Willock. I must have read the news wrong then. Uh, Arteta is not good enough and he doesn't know what he wants. 
Uh, Winston Tan says, uh, I sure with an OR because not, he's not expensive. I've not heard anything, anything, any updates in regards to possible what. The last news, he wants to play for a club, Winston, a club, I repeat, that is in, <clears throat> in Europe, Arsenal, <clears throat> and not in Europe. <laughs> oh, Static, good morning to you. Good morning to you, Static. Yeah, I think you probably give you like a, they'll probably give you like an eight out of 10 again. <laughs> I hope Arteta signed uh, Onana, Neves, and Owa. Well, Onana, Onana has not completed the deal to go to and sign for Leon. I'm not sure what that means. Does that mean he's coming to Arsenal? Don't think so. Uh, Ruben Neves. Arsenal, oh, come and get it done, man. Get Ruben Neves over the line. Get it done, Arsenal. Uh, and Owa, like I've just said, most likely going to uh, Denmark down the road. But who knows? Uh, Joe Willett scored more goals on loan than our entire midfield last season. You know what? There is, uh, again, I'm not, I'm not going to mention the other podcasters' uh, 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 platform, but one of the guys on the contributor on the panel says, you know, I can't understand what is the, you know, sh sh you know, Saka's stats. I can't remember how many goals he scored, but they're not fantastic. And what I will counter, our, uh, counter the argument is, you've got to remember, the guy is only... 18, 19 years of age. He will get better. But Kyle Saka will get better. But you got to remember, he's been utilised on the left side of midfield, the right side of midfield, a slight number 10. So what is it we're asking Bukayo Saka to do? Is he also going to be like a utility midfielder? Or are we going to say, this is the position that he plays? Don't move that from, from that position there. But all those things, take you've got to take that in consideration. He's young. He's been asked to play multiple positions there. And I think we overplayed him last season. We overplayed Bukayo Saka. Hey, Guns and Yellow Ribbons. Yes, yes, welcome, lads. I hope you, you guys are okay, man. I need to get on your show sometime. Sometime in the future. Is this the future? But yeah, guys, welcome. Welcome to live chat. Best of luck, Joe Willock. I wish you all the luck and your hard work is rewarded. Shame you couldn't break through into the first team. And that's the way that I see it. From unselfish, uh, you know, we want players to stay at Arsenal. We do. But if it's not going to work at Arsenal, what is the next thing you can say? I wish you all the luck, Joe Willock. But guys, yeah, you need to get me in your podcast sometime in the future. Is this the future? He scored against Man United, uh, Chelsea, big clubs. Yes, he, he did. Uh, uh, Kanja, Kan Kancha says, uh, me, I believe if Willock is sold and Arteta bring in Madison, we shall not regret it. Okay, that's a different perspective. Using that money to finance... Yeah, the James Madison deal. Could be. Eight goals in eight matches. A celebrant should not be calling the shots. Ooh, I see your point. Mm. But the way I see it is that he's been put, he's been put out alone how many times? Three times? Two times? Two, three times? But I understand your sentiments. Yeah, he should not be calling the shots. If we say you're going to that club because you are you are still an Arsenal player, you're going to that club. Oh, mm, I see your point. I never looked at it that way, but I see your point. Uh, I'm happy for Joe Willett too, uh, for the reasons that Newcastle will be a team to uh, unveil his uh, hidden potentials. Also, I see it's not the club for Joe Willock. I can only agree with the comment you've put there. I agree with it. If he cannot find a potential, if he cannot find a consistency at Arsenal and another club can give him that, what he's wanting, then why would you not want the best for him? Why would you not want him to go there? Ashton, good morning. How do you think Willett, uh, would 
do in a clock system now that uh, Ronaldo has left. Uh, he has an engine and a knack for scoring goals. I think he would do great stuff there. Again, you, do you know what it is? It's like I do look at Liverpool. I'm thinking, ah, oh, but it's almost the same faces, uh, the same faces. But what you know, I, I, maybe I'm looking at it from a simplistic point of view. But you want a core of players who can eke out results, who can get you results. That works, consistency. And so I can see Joe would it fitting in that system there, consistently playing, playing in that position. I mean, I know people say oh, he's like like an Aaron Ramsey type of player, arriving in the box and, like you say, managing to score goals. Some of that he's not done, really, playing at Arsenal. But, yeah, I can see him playing um, under Jurgen Klopp. Why is Arsenal wasting time to sign uh, Madison number 10, the lesser star player? <laughs> Good morning, John Wayne. Greetings, Alex and uh, California, <laughs> California Nation. Actually, that's got a ring to it. I might, might call that another segment, the Canon for their nation. Canon for TV nation. Oh. Can I use that? Can I use that name? Listen, Isco or Maddy or Owa. Isco, I did a video which came up live. Actually, that's a video that I, I uploaded and recorded a while ago. But I thought it's still apparent to show what happens when you don't go for a player who's in his prime. Because Isco, for me, is on a downward spiral. He's not the same Isco that I remember three or four years ago. Um, so that's why I did that video, which has got kind of gone, it's gone like haywire this morning. Uh, Madison, I just, you know what? The first one I look at is the price tag. I just can't get beyond that. I can't get, if it, can, can someone get me over that, please? That's the first one I look at. I'm thinking £60 million as a minimum figure. I was thinking, no. I still can't get over £15 million pounds for, um, for Ben White. And so we look at the last player, Hossam Mawai, a player that I believe we were on the, on the verge of signing last, this time last year. And Edu couldn't get the deal, done, the deal done. And like this time, it's like it's, the value's halved. And what's happened now? We are not in Europe. And the player of that pedigree would want to play in Europe. He won't come to Arsenal. So who am I stuck with? Isco, Madison, or Owa? I don't know, man. I don't know. Isco, Madison, or Hossam Owa? Who would you choose? <laughs> I'll throw it right back at you. Who would you choose? Oh, my goodness. If it was Isco four years ago, I would go for him. If Madison was, I'll say, maybe £30 million, pounds, I'll go for him. If Hossam Awar didn't, you know, could say, OK, I'm, I'll go for any club. It doesn't matter whether they're doing Europe or not. I'll go for him. But I'll throw it right back at you, uh, Winston. Who would you go for? That's a tough one, man. Let me make a note of that. <laughs> Let me make a note of that. Maybe that can be our next um, uh, poll question, actually. I'm actually saying that. Let me just do it now quickly before I forget. Let me, let me do it now before I forget. But that's a good shout. That's a really good shout, man. Wow, my goodness. But yeah, I'll put a question back to you. Who would you choose out of the three? Isco, Madison, or Owa? Owa, 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 Owa. Hey guys, I'm just putting it as, as a poll actually now, so I don't forget. Choose only one. Dun, dun, dun. It's a poll. I don't know what I'm like. Let's go. Oh. You go live on here. I'm just done it now. Yeah. Uh, bow. There we go. Done. Let's go back in the live chat. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. I do apologize. I do apologize. Where was I? Okay, here we go. Ashton says, I believe Messi will stay at Barcelona. The statement is a powerful a power play uh, to get La Liga to change uh, the salary cap. I, I, you got to remember, was it last year? He wanted to leave, wasn't he? Uh, uh, it was last year, last season. I think it's time for him to leave. 
Colombia? Colombia? Oh, you mean the shirt? Yeah, Colombia. Colombia. Oh, it's Colombian. Yeah. Stu Mac, good morning. Winston Turner, considering how Cazola stole the EPL. It's going behind a while. No medicine, a bottom half bully boy who has a rotten attitude off, off the ball. Um, someone has said actually, Stu Mac, that uh, Madison has a terrible attitude. Uh, I mean, I don't follow Leicester City because I follow Arsenal, but I wasn't aware. Is that true? He has a horrible. Um, and again, there's been some talk about Brendan Rodgers falling out with uh, Madison and vice versa. So I'm not sure if that's true. I'm not sure if that's true. Uh, Tobias and Lokonga is the future. It is the future. Selfish with uh, uh, selfless with technique, <clears throat> but Ben White, a fifty million uh, pound centre back, who who can't head header isn't. I'll, I'll say no more. I'll say no more because I've said the same thing. But anyway, we go on. Good morning, Abraham says. That's my father's name. May so rest in peace, Abraham. Good morning, members of the Gunners. Uh, what's up with Arsenal market today? <laughs> the market's still closed. <laughs> the market's still closed. Can't find the monies. Uh, no way in hell would Messi ever come to Arsenal. Dream on. Uh, how, on uh, how are things in La, in La La Land? <laughs> but one can only dream. dream. Yeah, dream on. It would never happen. It would never come to Arsenal. Never. Uh, Anderson says uh, Arteta out or uh, in. Well, we need a manager. Who's going to manage? I mean, Oa's not going to manage, is he? <laughs> uh, Anthony, this is his masters. Yes, blessed. Good morning, Alice, and, and blessed to you as well, my brother. <laughs> uh, the Spanish Mr. Bean Arteta, the coolest one, the coolest one, the coolest one, the coolest one. I'm hoping Arteta signs Owa, says uh, Felix. Again, all this talk about, oh, you know, he's he allegedly told Ben White, oh, hey, Ben White, thank you for signing, but you're not going to be the last signing. We've got another signing coming in. I was thinking, what the, that's got nothing to do with Ben White. If it is true, Mick Arteta said a, a, new, a newly signed player, you're not the only one. We've got another player we're going to sign. I was thinking, it doesn't sound right to me. But it's got nothing to do with Ben White. He's just here to sign. Boom, that is it. Come in to train and play for Arsenal. It's got nothing to do with him. Whether it's a never, never sign or he's the last signing. Nothing to do with him. But again, rumours, isn't it? Rumours. Uh, we shouldn't uh, have so, um, sell him, but Arteta is the man for the job, says Christopher. Uh, sure, my brother. Thank you for that. Yeah. I'm going to use that, yeah. That's, uh, I like the sound of that, man. Ha, ha, ha. Isco, as he is uh, the cheapest and most exp uh, experienced, you get what you pay for, 20 million and, uh, for three years in midfielder. Not so bad of an idea, isn't it? But you say that, but what about the level of wages? He'll, he'll demand an astronomical amount of wages. I just, for me, I'm thinking, an Isco three years ago, Boom, yes. Can't be buying players who are like, you know, towards the end of the career or they, they've seen their better years are behind them. And that's what I see when I look at Isco. Wonderful player, but uh, I don't know, man. I don't know. Dominic Law, good morning, says uh, Ruben Nevis Basuma or uh, James Ward Prowse. Oh, my goodness. That's, Dominic, that's an easy one for me, man. James Ward Prowse. I should have put him in the mix. I should have put it. Yeah, it's too late now, isn't it? Uh, I've already done it. Uh, can I remove it? Is it too late to remove? Uh, it's too late to remove it now. Uh, yeah. James Ward Prowse. Ace 26. Captain Material. Dead Ball Specialist. No attitude problems. James Ward Prowse. Prowse. There you go. Boom. Well done, Dominic. Well done. Well done, indeed. Whoops. Uh, Benedict says, um, "How about a Madison deal?" I haven't heard anything. There's not been any updates on that, unfortunately. Yeah. The last news I, I said on Wednesday was that Benedict said, "Well, actually, we don't need to sell. We don't need to sell our players." 
So I think he's going to be keeping on to... I mean, they've won, you know, the FA Cup. But that report said, Brendan Rodgers came out defiantly saying, we don't need to sell our players. Why would? Why do we need to sell our players? I hope we get Tammy B, says uh, Terry Edwards. The assembly says, Isco or Shaka, anything over under K for Shaka is too much. Um, well, for me, I'm looking at the left side. Isco, not Shaka. Pat says, a uh, question. Uh, Alex, what do you think about signing African players because of the African Cup of, of yeah, in January? That is That has been the problem. I know, you know, even under Arsene Wenger, when he had a plethora of African players, I was thinking, what's going to happen when they all have to go to the African Cup of Nations? We're going to be left short. Squad depth. Squad depth. That's, that's what I think about. Just make sure you've got all your uh, and your angles covered. So even if they do go and play in the nation, African Cup of Nations, we're not going to be short. But yeah, what uh, my brother and I ha have had this discussion before about the players that Arsenal should be going for. But the problem is, my friend, is where's the scouting network? Where are the scouts? Across Europe, Central South Africa, Asia. We're, we don't have a scouting network anymore. Remember, they were all sacked. Last year, there was 55 of them all sacked. So there's no one on the ground in Africa, the African continent, saying, all right, okay, this player, you know, he's possibly, you know, he might be, he might be good. Or an African player played in a different league in Europe. There's no scouts in Europe thinking, okay, right, yeah, maybe. There's no scouts in Asia because they've all gone. They've all been sacked. But why not? Why not? No scouts, that's the problem. Hey, got a young. You missed it. We're all fired up this morning, man. Well, and I said, uh, how, how long ago did, did, did I say uh, this is uh, Arteta's team, including uh, Shaka? For the longest time. For the longest time. But like I said, Colin, Arteta cannot use the excuse now. He can't use the ex excuse. They are. This is not my team. This is not my team. This is your team. This is your team going forward now. There can be no excuses now. But for me, what is going to be quite telling is what happens when he starts to lose, if he lose two or three on the bounce. The stadiums, as we saw against Chelsea, was, wasn't at capacity. There was a good number of people in the stadium. But for me, that's, what, that's what's going to be quite telling, what happens when he starts to lose some games on the bounce. The pressure will be immense on him. Saliba's trying to secure his spot in the World Cup. Ah, well, Pap, yes. You know, as, as a as a um, someone who's been supporting Arsenal for the longest time, I ju I just can't get with modern day footballers. I know you know things have to change, but with social media, when players go to a social media account and they start to complain about life at a club, not necessarily Arsenal. I just can't get with with modern day footballers. Just keep your mouth shut, put your head down, and get on with the job at hand. What is your job at hand? It's to play for the club. The club that you're employed at, again, not necessarily Arsenal, just keep your head down, keep your mouth shut, keep quiet, and do your job. And if there is an interview to be done, then, it's, you know, whether it's like a, you know, you're an established newspaper, or whoever it is, then, then then so be it. But coming out on your social media account, I just, I just, I can't, my, 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 yeah, you know, I just can't get with that. But I know that's model, modern day fo footballers for you. Leno is uh, hot and cold. We need a goalkeeper to challenge for this spot. And we need a new uh, right back. Yeah, there's some news about Cedric, isn't there? Arsenal trying to loan him out, sell him. I think he's, he's, I wouldn't say he's the best thing since slight spread, but he's better than Bellerin. Which leads me to think this new season, we're going to see Bellerin. We're going to see Bellerin. Uh, nothing, nothing KFC coming to a Brentford soon. And that prediction of two points from four, uh, the, the first four games, well, that would be a, that would be selling, I wouldn't it? Colin. Wow. 
goodness. Oh my goodness. Uh, Colin uh, Bellerman hasn't uh, left yet uh, either. And uh, remember, Mustafi turned down a contract uh, or head or he, oh, okay, he'd still be uh, here. Terry Edwards says, uh, uh, I said, um, I said, I, oh, well, I'm not sure what you mean. Tammy Abraham, you want to, uh, Tammy Abraham. Uh, we need three more signings, minimum a keeper, a right back, and a midfield partner for a party. Uh, uh, exactly, it's uh, this is This is poison, uh, no mistake of it now. Oh my goodness. Uh, question, uh, do you think uh, that the wages cut has a lot to do with some attitudes in the changing rooms? Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Without a shadow of a doubt. And um, I get to see players, you know, detached from reality. It's all about the money. <laughs> yeah, let's just move on. <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> Do you think uh, there will be a new signing for the Brentford game? Oh, before, before. Uh, Mohit Kumar, I have uh, welcome, welcome on Canal Four TV. I have literally no idea, no idea. Um, I'd far rather see players go before the start of the new season. But with Arsenal, you just don't know. You don't know. Uh, by Cedric, and we will uh, give you class now. <laughs> <We will be. laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Sean P's in the house. Watch out, people. Watch out. What's happening, Sean, man? You okay, man? Uh, so what's your thoughts on the financial uh, report showing that money has been spent, which shows uh, the lack of ambition isn't a financial problem, but purely the lack of care of results? Well, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I think what it is, is that, you know, it's... Someone asked me this question before. What are the elements, Alex, that are prohibiting Arsenal to go and, and evolve and change and improve? And I said, those are one of the, the elements there. It's not so much about the money. You can buy any player that you want, but does it mean that type of player has the right profile? What is the profile that Arsenal needs to be looking at? The player must be young, hungry, and we'll show a lot of fights. Those are the basics, the basic element. You can buy a player, but it depends what has been the, the, the profile of the player we've been buying for the last five years. What is the profile? Well, I'll tell you what, the profile has been the wrong kind of player. Players who are you know, on the wrong side of 30, players who have seen it and done it all, Players who are not motivated. So again, it's not it's not so much about the, the you know taking care of the results and you know on the pitch. I understand. I think that's what you're talking about on the pitch. You know, is the manager clued up to see what's going on? It's not that. It is not that. It's the cards he has at his hands. These players have to come with the, with the basics, not troublemakers, not players who are. You know, who are on a downward trend in their career, who have seen everything. Not players who come with a history of being injured. We have to change the kind of players that we'll be looking for. The recruitment. Recruitment. But who is recruiting the players? Yeah, spending the money on the players, but who are these players that we've been we've been trying to buy or we've been we've been uh, buying over the last five or ten years? Because we're not about to win the Premier League. 18 years now, it will be. Because we won't, be, we won't win the Premier League come the end of this new season. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. Hopefully we'll see Madison, but we are penny-pinching. Just put the money on the table. Remember when we apparently had a £250 million on the watch? Yes, I remember that. And what did I say? I said, it's not true. It's just rumours. Yeah, yeah. If it is true, like you say, pay the money. <laughs> excuse me. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, people. I do that. Excuse me. No, uh, Hakim, good morning. Because uh, Tammy uh, Martinez, uh, Correa, I did, I did two videos on him, actually. 
Uh, Madison Odegaard, uh, Owa, pick one. Uh, Onana, uh, Ramsdale, Johnson, pick one. I'll go for uh, uh, Johnston. And from the Tammy, Martinez, I'll go for Martinez. And from the Madison Odegaard, Owa pack, I'll go for... Uh, I'll go for Owa. That's a good, that's a good um, shout, actually. That's really good, really, really good. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Uh, I've heard Arsenal are trying to buy Kalasinatis a contract for two million, but his agent wants three million. Could that be with his wages cut? <sighs> be excited, really? Biggest overall ever this window, really? Move from hybrid to complete with the biggest, uh, best clubs, really? How many broken promises does it take? Do you know what, Colin? We're still not at that. When we're still not at that point where things have to get a lot worse before they get better. You know, I remember working with um, uh, children, young adults who are on a conditional release, and even at that point things had to get a lot worse for them to have the epiphany and say, actually, you know what? I need to change my life. Now, with Arsenal, in that regard, we're still, we're still not at the tipping point. We're not there yet. Things still have to get a lot worse before they can get better. Whether that means we need to get relegated, whether it means truly, Daniel Ek, where's Daniel Ek? We need a new owner. Whatever it means, we still haven't reached that tipping point. Things have to get a lot worse before they can get better. All the broken promises is one thing. There's one facet, but things have to get a lot worse before we can see an upward, upward uh, trend, a, a change, a serious change in culture at Arsenal. We're not there yet, Colin. We're not there yet. We will never see the likes of players of uh, Jordan Armstrong again play uh, mercenaries in now. Yes, it's all about the money. I'm thinking, you know, the, you get paid a humongous amount of money that the average person will never see in their lifetime. And you put on top of that, oh, well, you know what? I've got, you know, I'm a social media, um, you know, I, I, you know, I make changes, I, I make decisions, but that brings in money for me. I mean, how much is enough? When is enough enough? Modern day footballers are just for me. No. Nah. Here we go. This so from a sunny roof in London. Safety first. That's what I'm going to say. Safety first. <laughs> uh, Jared uh, says that the squad needs a massive overhaul and just start all over. Selling players like Lacquer and Orba and finally investing in youth wouldn't be a bad option, given Orba that lengthy contract was a big risk. You, you would have thought Arsenal would have learned the lesson from our former number 10. But no, we never learn the lesson. Never learn the lesson. Because we're trying to you know, do the same things, hoping for a different outcome. You can't do that. Change the way we do things to get a different outcome. And it's not nothing to do with a hindsight's a wonderful thing. You could have seen this was gonna happen. Ace 32 can't score, can't score a goal. Can't score a goal. So what we're stuck with him now, aren't we? And you know, people say, oh well, you know, we need to get rid of this defender, he makes mistakes and errors. Why can't we say the same thing? So what, is Aubameyang untouchable now? Is he untouchable? Look for, for Canal 4 TV? No one gets a pass here. Nobody gets a pass. We have our favourites. But there's no room for sentiments. No room for sentiments. A player comes, a player goes, and that's just the way it is. We have to be ruthless. Make unpopular decisions. Not unpopular for me. Not um, don't get twisted. If a player has to go, he has to go. All the sentiments, oh you know, Shaka, this or oh, bettering, that, clash of this, no. 
clearly we're doing something wrong. Eighth place, two season running, and you might say, oh, Mikko Arteta. Mikko Arteta is just one facet of the problem. Scouting. Who's scouting? Who's doing the recruitment? Who's doing the, the who's crunching the numbers? When it's time for the players to be sold, who's doing it? Who is doing it? You know, listen, it's easy to say Mikko Arteta, he's he's the bigger problem. He's not the bigger problem. The owner is the biggest problem we have at Arsenal. Arteta is just one part of the problem. But am I saying I want Arteta out? No, I'm not. I didn't want Unai Emery out. I didn't want him out. And people said, oh, Alex, oh, you're so funny. I don't want to laugh at you, Alex, but I'll... player power got him out. The media got him out. Disrespectful to Unai Emery. And I've said, you know, you know, having players on Canon Foy TV, you know, whether they're the present or past, ex-players, I'm not so sure that's the way I want Canon Foy TV to go. But if there's one player, actually two people, I would love to interview Liam Brady, who was my legend, who's still my hero, and Una Emery. I would love to interview him. Say, so, you know, Una, and it'll have to be done in Spanish. Do it in Spanish. You know what I mean? But yeah, man. Yeah, player power. Like you said there, the squad needs a massive overhaul. Start things all over again. We're not, we're not in we're not in Europe. We're not in Europe. Oh guys, just three minutes short, actually two minutes short of a uh, of an hour. <laughs> Getting laundry in Alex uh, going, it's gonna uh, oh is it? It's not gonna rain. It's not gonna rain. Is it gonna rain? Behave yourself. Uh we should look at uh, Cantwell. <laughs> Jared, don't look don't get me started, man. I mean, you know, I'll give you the comment comments of, of the live chat so far. You know what, James Rowe, who's a regular contributor on Cantwell, he said two seasons ago, two, three, why didn't Arsenal go in for Cantwell? Should have gone for Cantwell. And people just laughed him off. Johnston. Wow, ah, my goodness. But you know what, Jared, what I'll, I'll put out, propose to you, you know, we, I think you are new because I've not seen you uh, comment in the live chat before. We have a, seg a live segment every Friday, not now because we're doing transfer news almost every single day, but look in when we get back to having our guest back on the um, the flagship uh, show, which is called Easy Talk every Friday. Um, my brother has his own segment called The Voice of Reason every Wednesday. And the Monday slot, even slot, I'm, I'm gonna call it the, um, the Canon Project with James Rowan Hotel, The Godfather. If you would like to come on and be one of the contributors, Jared, Send me an email and we'll get you on the live show when we do eventually get back. It will probably be at the end uh, of August once the transfer window is closed. But if you are interested, my friends, because we're always looking to evolve the channel, something like I can't say for Arsenal, you can send me an email. Where's the, where, where's the email? Sorry, guys. Sorry. Yeah, Charlie, if you are interested, send me an email, arsenalrepublic1 at gmail.com, and then we can talk you through how we do. Uh, the, the, the live show. That's only if you are interested. If you're not interested, that's okay. But if you are interested to be on the show, the live show, um, I said beginning the first week in September, send me an email. Yeah? So that's going up to Jared. Uh, let's continue. Actually, uh, shall we continue? Yeah, let's go continue. I'm not going to take another break. Let's go through and see. Ashley says, oh, don't worry, we have a Messi coming as a big... <laughs> oh, well, it's this season is uh, yeah, likely uh, 12th or lower if I the last entirety. <laughs> I think um, one has to go, Shaq or, or, or Nenny. Some may say both. We need a refresh. We need to be refreshed in the middle. I know who I'll choose. Did anyone mention that uh, I took a to use a job? <laughs> no, but you have. You just mentioned it. Uh, the running of Arsenal changed uh, when we got uh, to the Emirates. 
uh, what they believe of when they walked into the Emirates Stadium has changed the same as football Arsenal just never adapted. Who was it who told me about Alex? The thing is, you don't really didn't realize that even when we were at um, Highbury, we had debts. I said, yeah, I, I knew that. But you live within your means. Live within your means. The, the Invincibles wasn't at the Emirates, it was at Highbury. Unbeaten. All those players over the 100 year history of Arsenal didn't happen at the Emirates, it happened at Highbury. Live within your means. A small stadium, yes, I understand that. But now we're at a humongous stadium. Okay, I get it. we've won the FA Cup, we're not record uh, 14th time. But now we need to we needed to kick on from there to compete in the Champions League, compete with the elite clubs. What is that the Super League? Is that what it's all about? But no, you're right, they assembled. You're right. I need to wrap up this one soon. <laughs> Give game for uh, an hour now. Uh, Randall, good, uh, good afternoon. Says, uh, those who wanted the best manager we never had, uh, we ever had uh, to leave. Yeah, I mean, I think you're probably talking about uh, Arthur Domingo. Arthur Domingo couldn't stay at Arsenal forever. You couldn't say that. Everyone has their sell-by date. Forever is a long time. I uh, didn't want Unai, but this guy absolutely must go. <laughs> oh, my days. <laughs> the club, whole club the whole disrespect, disrespected our, um, Unai. But yes, they did. They did. Uh, which player do you think uh, needs to go on loan? No, none of them. They all they need to be sold. No, 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 none of this loan business, man. Sorry, Pat. No, no more loans. Just get rid of the players. Get rid of the players. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, who do you want us to sign uh, for goalkeeper? Well, J Sam Johnston, I guess. Uh, again, again, uh, uh, Mohit. I understand your sentiments, but again, the first thing that Arsenal should have focused on was to be selling the players. Sell the players. Mess with <laughs> Well, we can dream, can't we? We can dream. Good morning. <laughs> I'm just tired of Arsenal transfer dealings. There's a lot of players that have been linked to with uh, from the past and are present, and uh, the result, as a result, such players can't be world-class players. No, they can't, Moses. They cannot. <laughs> we will never learn a lesson a run by a ship of fools well a sinking ship a sinking ship we're all this cargo you know can't get off the cargo yeah everyone will be sinking in the sinking ship the sinking ship run by fools uh do you think the board uh undermined the manager with the players and the players uh undermine the board with the manager i no one takes responsibility for what they do it could be it could be but, you, you know, you would have thought we would have learned from the lesson. But we haven't learned our lesson. Clearly, haven't learned the lesson. Uh, do you rate Tammy uh, as, as what? As a straight swap for Lacazette or in addition to the group of uh, strikers we have? Now, look at his stats. His stats are not that great. They're not that great. Uh, let's have a look. Messi, Ronaldo, Drogba, and etc. But still, we never learn our lesson. Never learn our lesson. Uh, Sten uh, says, uh, why don't you say that Arsenal is the cause of all but playing like this? Uh, you guys are unfair. Res respect. Or, well, listen, is it is it not a, is it a coincidence or what? That since he signed the thing, his form has just fallen off the cliff. Not Not leadership material. Not a captain. And all this stuff about, oh, well, you know what? He doesn't get the service. Oh, poor, or, you know, Alba. Then come hunting and looking for the ball. And then when he does get in the area, he hasn't scored a goal in the preseason. Hasn't scored a goal. So all this stuff about, you know, what this defender, Bellerin, needs to be moved on. Kalas needs to be, then clear not good enough. Why can't we not say that about Aubameyang? Why can we not say that about, Abamia. In my job, 
if I down tools and I'm stop working, you know, refuse to carry out my duties, do you think my bosses are going to be happy? Do you think they're going to say, oh, Alex, yeah, you know, it's okay. You know, we'll just give you a raise. It's all right. You, you can just sit back. You know, let the children run amok in the classroom. Yes, it's okay. Do you think they're going to be happy with it? They, they won't. They're not going to be happy. So for those of you who think it's okay for Uber to have, you know, an off-season, understand with the personal reasons, it's okay. It doesn't work that way. It does not work that way. I do think this, uh, this the, the stadium uh, was a downfall of Wenger. I wouldn't say that was the only thing because I think after the second, you know, more than twenty odd years, after the second decade, the, the, he couldn't push on, couldn't win the Champions League. Although he said, "Ah, oh, you know what? We've got enough time. We'll win the Champions League." Look, the time has passed. It's been three years since he left Arsenal, so I wouldn't say it was only the stadium. I think he just couldn't develop the ideas. I mean, the profile of players that he was now looking for was like short but quick. If it ain't broke, don't try to fix it. Excuse me, sorry, it's the wind from the uh, the sparkling water. If uh, Arteta had Laka, uh, Modric, uh, De Bruyne and uh, Kane, he would still pick Shaka. Yes, he would. <laughs> Russ Moore, uh, Morgan, uh, good afternoon to you now. It's uh, now almost uh, quarter past 12 in the midday. Uh, Messi was signed for Arsenal when he knew plays <laughs> uh, That's a funny one. That's a funny one. Uh, yeah. Sinking ship with a bucket, a bucket hat <laughs> that has no bottom. To, oh my God, to bail out. So oh, dearie me. Then Messi, see his Arteta messing his pants. Oh! Girl. Question with all, uh, of all the research and the football intelligence you've acquired over the years, do you think the knowledge, the intelligence? Okay. Do you think a manager with an ambition uh, would join Arsenal? I can't see it. Uh, can you? If the parameters are set for the vision that uh, uh, a manager has, then, then why not? Then why not? But we, we laugh and joke about Conte. I'm sure Colin Young will say, you know, oh, Conte needs a job. But for a manager like Conte, who's won almost everything, the parameters will never be right for him because of the owner, for the owner. The parameters, the vision that the manager has, has to be in line with the owner and board members. If they're not aligned, it doesn't make any sense. So the parameters will never be right for Antonio Conte, actually vice versa, for the owner. So, yeah, I hope that's answered your question. <laughs> uh, great content as usual, my friend. Thank you, Russ. Thank you indeed, my friend. Thank you for those words there. As I'm late, uh, no hope for new signings. Well, I'll say thank you for coming in, my friend. But the rumor that, I, that I've heard is that Arteta apparently told Ben White, Oi, Ben White. Thank you for signing for Arsenal, but you're not the only one. There's going to be another signing. There's another one coming through the door after you. I was thinking, A, really? I don't really believe he would say that. But if he did say it, why is the manager telling a new sign that? The new sign has, there's none of his business. It's none of Ben White's business. You're here, pay for the club. That's it. Do your job. That's all you need to know. But in regards to a new, another signing, I have no idea. No idea. Give him a world class and number 10 and a good defense that doesn't uh, concede three seconds after he scored to break his spirit. <laughs> uh, but man, uh, would the stories of Kante, Body, and Cranky in the heart, hallway would be priceless? Yeah, I'll be there to see it, taking the videos. Guys, um... <laughs> yeah. Why is this? You won't be the last sign, uh, significant signing. <laughs> That's a good hey up, Gunas. Six months watching. Let's hit the like buttons. All those uh, newbies here, smash the subscribe button to see more fun facts and rants here on Canon or TV. People, I'm out of here. I'm done. I'm dusted. I'm cream crackers. Is this the future?
We've got a manager who can't play the same 11 from back to back. Is this the future? We've got Bellerin, Shaka, Kalasinac, still at Arsenal. Is this the future? Oh my goodness. <laughs> what you guys can do right about now is subscribe. Lend me your ears and your fingers, of course, for listening, your fingers for subscribing. Do it now. Be part of the community. Yeah? I hope you enjoyed it. A little, little bit of a rant at the beginning. Uh, Joe Willock. Joe Willock, yes. Signing for uh, Newcastle. I'm happy for him. I'm ha really happy for him. Again, from someone who's been supporting Arsenal for the longest time, you want a player to be happy. If you can't get that from what he wants at Arsenal, then let the youngster seek his fame and fortune at another club. That's it. Period. Period. Bakari Saka, we've still got Lionel Messi, Jack Grealish, now it's for Man City. 19 years at one club. 19 years. And I saw parts of the interview, it looked a little bit choked up, but he's made the right decision. There's a fly. Get out of it. <laughs> There's a fly. Get out of it. <laughs> but he has made the right decision. Yes, yes. And who else was there? I can't remember who else, was, who else there was. But anyway, that's it. That's it. We are done and dusted. Again, guys, make sure you subscribe to Canafoy TV. Be part of the community. Because if you don't, you're going to miss out. You'll miss out. And I don't want you to do that. All right, I'm out of here. Uh, next time you see me, maybe, possibly, uh, maybe tomorrow morning. But if you don't subscribe, you're going to miss me anyway. And you know what? Ashley D was right. It's just that the, the heavens have opened up because it's here from here. <laughs> from, from, from a scaffold on top of a building. Ashley D, be careful, my friend. Be careful, okay? Uh, we are out. And, uh, yeah, enjoyed the, the short video. Not more than two minutes. My thoughts about um, Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi is on the verge of leaving uh, Barcelona. 21 years. Is it 21 years? With one club? God, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Anyhow, guys, right about now, you have been watching Canon Fodder, the channel for Arsenal fans all over this world.